Hello, welcome to Anderson's TV. My name is Jack. I don't know why I'm doing this today, but I'm just feeling it. Maybe it's because I'm flying with the Maltese Falcon. Woo. And we've got our hands on the Arturia Micro Freak. I saw this at the NAM show. And before I start waffling on, there's another video that might not be out or might be out in a little bit where I'm playing through the first 20 presets in here. So if you don't want to hear me talk about it, find that one or just leave and go have a life now. Right, so what is the Micro Freak? Microfreak has one oscillator, single oscillator, but as we'll see, we're going to delve in and listen to that oscillator, super versatile oscillator. But the hybrid bit, it's got an analog filter, it also has a 50 point modulation matrix. And something that is really unique is this keyboard, this capacitive t keyboard. And we'll talk a bit about that in a minute. Anyway, let's just hear a little patch and then we'll go on a wander into it, okay? segue there that patch is even called invitation and what I wanted to demonstrate first off is this keyboard this capacitive keyboard now essentially what they've done is it looks really cool by the way when you're up close very shiny anyone into wearing inappropriate amount of bling sometimes a Maltese Falcon does um, but you can't fly very well with it on this looks really it's shiny anyway what does it do it's basically an exposed circuit board and gives you a really connected feeling to the sound. No balls, okay? It really does. So if I touch it here, to get more pressure from it, it's not actually how hard, but how much of my finger is over the surface. And what's cool is, with that one oscillator, but it's four voices of uh, paraphonic, uh, paraphony? Yeah, paraphony. Four voices of paraphony. So I can play chords, four voice chords. And each finger has individual control over the pressure. So really lovely if you had a song and you wanted to just ride a drone part through it, which I always love doing. Uh, say we're in C. You could just do a take for a few minutes and just get really subtly evolving things and really be in touch with the sound. Anyway, another great way with that is on some of the lead sounds. If I find one in here, oh, let's have a look. Really great presets, by the way. Check out uh, another video I did on it. I was blown away. That was the first time I turned it on. Um, a rebel lead. Okay, cool. So there's a funny little lead sound there, but. Any reservations I had over this keyboard were gone, not only because you've got that lovely connection to the almost like polyphonic aftertouch, you can uh, really be precise with it and shred. Because it's lightning fast, it's just when you're touching it, you don't have to depress the key. So there's actually quite the scope for it for anyone out there who's a proper keyboard player. Uh, it does have MIDI out and in on these cool, it comes with the little cables. They're all right, that's good. Anyway, so that's the keyboard. Moving on, let's take a look at the digital oscillator. Up in the lofty preset numbers of 161, we find an initial patch. And uh, this is what it sounds like. Exciting stuff. Now, let's have a look at this digital oscillator. Orange knobs, exciting stuff. First thing that happens, it says super wave. And at the moment, monophonic, but I'm going to put this par paraphonic on so I can get some chords going. Really nice sound off the gate. I, I love I love those type of tones. Anyway, with these wave, timbre, and shape things, we can shape that sound. So you're hearing that. Go for a triangle. Sign. Square, saw, and then you've got the timbre of each one, so this is the saw. Detune it for some bigger chords. 
Uh, let's try on the square wave, see what that does. Now, let's go to the next one. This is a wave table, and let's hear the first one off the gate. And when I change this wave, all different wave tables. And again, the timbre will move and scan through the waveform on this one. Wave tables, sorry. And we're just in the oscillator section, nothing going on other with filtering or any of that stuff. This one is a harm, harmo, harmo. If you're in Middlesbrough and you like palmos, this might be the oscillator for you. So that says content it's changing. Sculpting and then chorus. So you get like almost like Juno-y stuff. We've got an octave switch here. Next oh, oscillator, we're flying through these. This one's called Car Plus Strings. And you've got a bow effect, so string sound. Nice, and then we are into the virtual analog. Also, I think this is really important because this is where all the flavors are coming from in that preset. Go check out that video when you hear of me playing through the presets if this is really boring, okay? I totally understand why. Uh, but now we're into the virtual analog ones. And if I do this bad boy, we're gonna get detune. Sound. Operator FM synthesis. That's cool. Really like stereotypically FM sound off the gate. So you can change the ratio. started sculpting away, so this can be really good for percussive sounds. Formant. Now, really, we've got a chord one here. So we can change, you got uh, minor nine. We got the old favorite, let's have a little look for something else, major seven. Gonna be really useful, especially when you combine it with the secrets of this thing, Scott. Speech synthesizer, pretty weird, but I dig it. Frequency, frequency, yellow. So there's different words, and you can change the timbre of it. Bit 
Take him a keeper, I dig it. Modal. Almost like changing the envelope on it as well. And we haven't even gone there. Let's see what else we've got cooking for us. That's it. So we've gone through the digital oscillator. If you're still here, you deserve a cup of tea. Let's move on to the analog filter. Okay, quick listen to the analog filter. It is a two pole uh, kind of SEM style filter for all the geeks out there. And uh, got this one called Cat Hill and I'm gonna trigger a little sequencer and just flip it. It's got a band pass, high pass mode as well. I'll put the resonance up. You'll hear what's going on, hopefully. <laughs> So it doesn't go really right down to the bottom of the sound, but enough for shaping it and definitely when the sequences start running, going to be interesting. Uh, but let's stay here with how you can control that filter and anything else on the synth. On this synth. Envelopes, movement, how we're going to make these sounds move. It's got a 50 point modulation matrix here, which actually, at first for me, this is like a nightmare for me. Anything like this really turns me off. But it's pretty simple, you move it along and say for example you, you wanted the pressure to affect the pitch, I can click it and then I can turn it up on here on the screen it says how much, so let's give it a big old dollop. So as I put more of my finger on that key, I'm introducing some pitch movement. Even an idiot like me could figure that one out. Uh, cycling envelope, so this envelope initially is set to the filter and you've got how much, a filter amount, which is cool, so how much this is affecting the filter. And then when you hit amp mod, it's sharing it. So you've got uh, amp envelope and filter envelope combined. Uh, this cycling envelope, a lot of it, you can hear in the patches they're using that introducing, you can assign it, freely, freely assign it to any of these parameters and you also have three assignable slots here so you can just go to assign, turn the knob and it's there. Uh, let's have a look at the sequencer because I think once you've started making sounds one of the first things you're going to do is use this little sequencer so let's see if I can figure that out. Right we've gone to our friend the init patch and uh, let's quickly choose a oscillator to work with. Make it paraphonic. And then if I am here, this should affect the... So I can make it, give it maybe a little bit of release. That'll do. Uh, so we shaped it a little bit. I'm going to keep it super simple so you see the workflow. And uh, should I filter it a bit? That's wide open. Just to give it a bit of flavor with that analog stuff in there. Now, to sequence it, we've got an arpeggiator first of all, so you can just turn that on and see what happens. So you can change the octave. Uh, anything in blue here, you can access using the shift button uh, to do and what we're gonna now start using are some of these little touch buttons down here. Initially, this really cool looking strip, this is set to pitch. Cool, and, but we want to, we can hold the this as well. So hold, hold, we want to do a sequence. So we're gonna come in here in the initial patch, I think they're blank sequences, but if you hold shift, Sequencer, sequencer on, and then we need to record something. If we go down here 
to this, but it says real time recording. If I do this, I want to change, I want to find step recording. Let's see if it's on. I don't want real. Ah, oh, there we go, we got it. Come on. Step recording. There we go. I think my just clammy fingers. So, step recording, and if I play in steps, should record like it's entering them into the sequencer and when I hit this play it'll work. So let's try it out. Um and then play. And I can start shaping that sound. And then in the I'll filter that down, but here in the modulation matrix, I maybe could set something like the LFO to control the wave. Ooh, I've done that to pitch, so let's see what that does. And then we've got a sample and hold waveforms in here. Beautiful music, nat. But this pitch strip here, I'll turn it off so I can speak to save the editing. But when you, that's initially set to pitch, but here you've also got splice and dice. Splice will essentially change the gate length of each step, so we'll get some uh, shorter notes, longer notes, and dice is if the step is triggering at all. Almost a bit like from an ele electron device, but you know, we'll see what happens. That's splice, this is dice. Now, that was not very musical, but check out my video of all the presets. It's really great and especially expanded with just a little bit of effects in there. What an amazing bit of kit. Anyway, on to a conclusion. In conclusion, Micro Freak from Arturia. Incredible price, I think for it, you've got to come maybe try it if you don't believe me about the keyboard. I'm really enjoying it from the very first second I got it out of the box. I enjoyed it. I love the sound of the presets. Maybe me walking through the individual bits of it actually makes it really boring and you're like, oh, that's boring. And it's better to work from the presets. I think that'll be the way most people use it. Just wanted to show you the raw gubbins of it. Uh, Again, at that price point, I think just maybe a reverb and a delay afterwards would bring all these patches to a new realm of delight. Anyway, Maltese Falcon and I are going to say goodbye. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know in the comment section. We are listening and bear with us whilst we make these videos. Uh, this is a patch called Saying Goodbye, which seems rather nice and I leave it on. And uh, using this hold feature that not only holds the arpeggiator, but can hold chords as well. So like a cheat for a sustain pedal. Let's give it a go. Saying goodbye.